Seahawks. Hey, we here. This the crew right here? Yeah. All right, that's what's up. And we on like an official stage up in here. This is crazy. What's up, man? Hey, there's like a funk, soul, kind of like upbeat thing. There's a bop to like what you guys are doing. Let's take the weekend and drag situation, for example. The weekend release those first three mixtapes, which is incredible. You know, Trilogy was awesome, right? Take care project. Yeah. Right? If you guys remember that. Yeah. So that's what we're doing, but that's what took the weekend to the next level. So, yeah, but connection wise, I mean, like, you know, how do these people get to that next level doing that? I love that question. That's why I wanted to do it with you guys, because I think it's really relevant. So, um,. There's this guy, there's this artist in Toronto. You guys familiar with Belly? Yeah. So Belly was kind of popping in Toronto in like the 2000s. And he was kind of like the man. He was seeing some success and he's signing a few people. He had was signed to Belly for a long time. And a lot of people don't know that. A bunch of up and coming artists that were just doing their thing in Toronto. And they all kind of had affiliations and they knew each other. The reason why the weekend got that opportunity to write for Drake was because they've known each other for such a long time. And they met before either one of them blew up. And so it goes back to what I was saying earlier about how important it is to network and link with your peers. Because they are peers. Um, it's just that Drake took off first and took all his homies with him. Uh, so I say that to say that, you know, you want to find that golden kind of, uh, that golden opportunity will come when you work with your peers because you just never know, like, how many people are in here? 21 people? Someone in here could just take off. Literally. Like, someone could blow up, it could be you, it could be you, it could be anyone. So, um, you know, plant the seed early. There's no strategy. Like, Weekend didn't have a strategy. He was just a guy doing his thing and Drake just blew up and, and and they ended up doing a record, a bunch of records together, so. But every success story is crazy. There's a crazy story behind every success story. Like, look at Kendrick, K-Dot. Look at J. Cole's story. Trying to find a hit record with Jay and all that stuff. Like, every successful person has some kind of, like, weird thing that happens. So you, there's no real strategy, per se, like, for, for what you're asking, I think. I think it's like the key is to work with your peers. I really believe that. Knowing the music supervisor, building a relationship with that person and trust with that person, and then just pitching music. Another thing is like, you have a show like, uh, Keeping up with the Kardashians and like all those shows on like VH1 and stuff. A lot of these companies work with um, like other companies that specialize in licensing music out. So you have uh, a, a website, for example, called Jingle Punks. You guys should write that down. Jingle Punks. And they act as a middleman to pitch music to certain TV shows and music supervisors and stuff like that. A lot of music supervisors don't really uh, accept submissions directly from people. What they'll do is they'll work with like trusted brands like Jingle Punks or like a different brand and they'll say, hey, what do you guys have for us this week? We need 95 BPM hip hop songs in minor chords. What do you have? And then they'll, Jingle Punks will look into their database, pick like a hundred and send them over. Right, so that's that's another scenario. So, uh, when you're producing for artists as opposed to like producing a flex type of stuff, do you usually take it back, like you were saying, and have? I mean, I know there's frequencies that you kind of see out, of, especially for singers and rappers and whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you're producing for artists, do you find yourself scaling back? Thousand percent. When, when I, it depends on who it is, but one scenario is like, let's say I'm working with a rapper. Uh, I'll take it even further. Let's say I'm making a beat and I know I want to pitch it to a Joel Ortiz or a 2 Chainz, whatever, whoever it is. I'll purposely work within like a certain color palette and, and like consciously know that I don't want to overproduce 
Um, and I've been really getting into the habit of doing that. There's a science to it. There's definitely a science to like sound selection and knowing when to make the decision of like when enough is enough and when you go from like produce caring about like making a good song to like let me just like flex my muscle and flex my producer shit which sometimes can be good but a lot of times could be bad and then the artist hears it and they're like yo like i can't yeah, do anything it. and when you look at a song the way a song is split is a 100% pie. It's split halfway down the middle, 50% writing, 50% publishing, but then the writing portion is split into two, writer-composer and writer-performer. So I want to do my job. I want to make 50% of the record. And so when you start getting into that habit of like, getting in your bag and producing for the sake of like, knowing you want to make a good song, then you you know you'll start to like understand not to overproduce and get get to that flow. Put myself out there more and just uh -huh. keep the quality coming. Right. Um, as far as like marketing and stuff, that's stuff we're still trying. Still to working on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the Instagram ads are so interesting. The targeted ads because it really just also all depends on like how good of a targeted ad you make. You know, because like, if you don't get results, it doesn't necessarily mean that the track is shitty. It, it, like, it might mean that you, you're you targeting wrong, right? And then same with Facebook ads. Um, I think the ads are interesting, but even before doing ads, like, the thing I always say is just like, I would just put, put yourself out there and the brand out there in the most honest way possible. And like, don't, too, don't worry too much about like quality. Um, I think cool. quality is like also so subjective too. Like if you love something, like allow for people to decide if they like it or not. You know, as opposed to just like putting something out and hoping that everyone will love it. It's just like, nah, this is me. This is what I do. Here's my song. Fuck with me. And in that, doing that way, you give your fans an opportunity to become fans as opposed to just trying to impress everyone. So, um, man, it just, it always goes back to the same shit. I feel like a bro it's a broken record. Like, put the stuff out and be honest and, and like, respond to every fan, you know? <laughs> Go from one a week to like two a week and then kind of slowly gradual there, but like, put, put some shits out, see how they react. And from there. Clap it up for my man right here. What do what you were trying to do is like build the, the community mm -hmm. in, in that room or in that area. We just were trying to do that and nice. that's how I met a lot of these people in here as well as uh you know, this guy right here. Tight, tight. So you guys both producers? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're gonna play a beat each? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you rocking straight out there? Was that an SP? Yeah, it? about the SP with me today. Hey. You know what I mean? I drive a lot and I started listening to your podcast. Yes! Like, Wait, raise your hand if you listen to my podcast. If you don't, it's totally fine. Alright, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> you're cool, you're cool. You get a car, you get a car. Man, thank you, man. I'm, I'm glad I, I, I helped a little bit to get you back in the game. But, I mean, if you know, if you have 10,000 records, like, you know, if you love it, if you love it, you, you don't really, like, you don't officially ever really quit, right? Yeah, for sure. It's like, if you love it so much, you just do it. But I'm definitely excited to hear more, but. In mom's basement. The biggest risk I took after going full-time? Yeah, yeah. Well, so the risk I took was immediately going full-time. I went from high school to college for a year, dropping out and then doing it full-time. So I went all the way in early on. Um, no money, no job. After that point, you don't think there was like another big risk you took, or you just thought? No, just the, the entire was thing was a risk. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna do this and ignore my parents, and I'm gonna be broke. I'm not gonna have a personal life. I just want to make music all day, and I did. And uh, I did that in my mom's basement for four or five years. Five, well, more like five, six years. And then, um, and then I finally caught like a financial break, and then built from there. So it was it was a long time coming. Man, you know? The yeah. first risk was the biggest. The first, I dove in early. Yeah. I didn't I didn't like like gradually get there to like 
take that leap of faith, I just took it right in the beginning. Good, man. Come here, come together, and hopefully it builds to something like what you've been able to do. No, that's, that's, how, that's how cities become, uh, that's how cities grow. It's like uh, someone in the art community decides to like invest in something to grow it, and they take initiative. And what you guys are doing is you're taking initiative to grow the artist community here. No one takes initiative, it will never happen. We'll do a solo one first, and then we'll do a group one. Yeah, we're obviously, uh, kind of steal the idea or something like that. You put it out. Yeah, it's, it's normal to feel that way, like most producers do at first, but then after a while, you realize that it really doesn't matter. Okay. You know, like, there's so many people out there listening to music, like, be, having the fear of someone stealing your idea is just like not. Um, not relevant to like the end result and the end goal because it really like the odds of it happening are so slim and if it does it doesn't even really matter you want to have that mentality of always becoming better and now doing yourself like for whatever good beat you made a year ago you'll make a better one tomorrow yeah. and all the beats that you make next year will be better than the ones you make tomorrow you know what i mean so just having that mentality of making better music and outdoing yourself, that's what's going to help you grow, keep going. You just gotta not overthink any of it and just make music and have fun. Yeah, that's what it is. All right.